Hello, my friends. Cade Mila Falsha. It means a hundred thousand welcomes. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you, all my friends, whether you're Irish or not. And on St. Patrick's Day, everybody's Irish anyway. Well, in our video, we're going to give you a little bit of what our Irish life is like. I already have my corned beef and cabbage. I have gotten my outfit together, the kilt that I had made in Scotland, wow, 45, 50 years ago. I have some Celtic jewelry to show you, quite a bit of it here. I might do a little cooking tonight and just start my corned beef and cabbage. and Maybe make a loaf of my grandma Nellie Flanagan's Irish bread. It's going to be Irish all the way. And of course, Moosey, who is all dressed up over there, is going to make a cameo appearance as well. So stay tuned. We're going to have some Irish music. Maybe even an Irish coffee. Don't know about that one, but I'm going to try and get it all in. Now, a little bit of Irish Celtic history. There always was some controversy as to who wore the kilts first, the Scots or the Irish, and also who played the bagpipes first, the Irish or the Scots. So they never could come to a conclusion, but the culture is, since they are both Celtic nations, Ireland and Scotland, that they both wear kilts and they both, as traditional, play the bagpipes. So there you go. My kilt was made in Scotland, but I wanted the green, which is uh, not necessarily an Irish tartan. The Irish tartan has some orange and everything in it, but I preferred the Gordon. I believe this particular tartan is called the Ancient Gordon, if I'm not mistaken. And a lot of my Celtic jewelry, some of it is Scottish and some of it is Irish. Now, the traditional symbols of Irish jewelry is usually based on the Celtic cross, which is different from the normal Christian cross. It has a circle in the middle, and there are several variations of that, but normally you will see this in jewelry, and usually you see that cross, well, everywhere, all over Ireland, in cemeteries, Clonmacnoy, a very ancient place that we visited when we were in Ireland, and they're huge cement crosses, always Celtic with the circle in the middle. And that has different significances. Some say that it's sun, fire, earth, and water um, because of the quadrants that form within the circle. And then there's other ones that show compassion, unity, friendship, etc. One of the other traditional Irish jewelry symbols is the Trinity, which is, and I'm going to show you, let me show you some of my jewelry. The pin on my hat is, um, most Irish jewelry, by the way, is silver, and it has all sorts of symbolisms. This has the uh, Cairngorm stone in the middle, and there are Cairngorm mountains in Scotland, and these traditional stones are from those mountains. I have several pins. This one we bought in Scotland as well, but these are worn on the, which, which is called, and I'm, I'm sitting on it and I'm stepping on it right now. This is the, what they call the plate, P-L-A-I-T. Men and women will wear this. You'll see this in traditional men's outfits. And our son, Billy, by the way, became a bagpiper when he was a firefighter captain for the Los Angeles Fire Department. And uh, he was their major domo with the big black hat, had a beautiful, total kilted outfit. And I had one of these that was given to me in Scotland by a man called Willie Golf, 
who was a, a friend of Bill's from the Singer Corporation in Clydebank, Scotland, which is why we were over there in the first place. Bill was working there for three years. And he had fought in the African Front. And he actually, he also played the bagpipes and he played them several times at our house, particularly the night that we left Scotland. We were piped out of Scotland with all of our friends. And <clears throat> Willie gave me his pin that he wore in the war, World War II. And I was so just amazed to have it. Now I have given that to Billy and uh, he has that now. But this is one that is very similar. The other one was a lot bigger. And these are the Cairngorm stones that are from the mountains in Scotland. But they're worn on Irish kilts as well. Now, some of the jewelry, I have some silver bracelets that have the stone in the middle. Here's another smaller one. And this particular one, they all have the same crown. Can you see the, the crown on it? but I just love these. And depending on what they wanted to put on there, they're all engraved. This has the, the, the thistle, which is the Scottish flower of Scotland. They're Celtic and they're Irish Scottish. Now this is a pretty little bracelet that Bill bought me a couple of years ago. It's just a little gold bracelet and it has the Trinity symbol on one end and a shamrock on the other. This one's very, very dainty. Here's another uh, silver design. And a lot of these Celtic designs are just silver rods intertwining, and they all have different significances to them. You remember my jewelry that I bought at the thrift shop. I didn't want to wear it with this outfit. I will probably wear it tomorrow with a green blouse of some sort. And um, remember the necklace? That, that was the bracelet. And we all thought it would be beautiful on St. Patrick's Day. The trouble is it doesn't, doesn't really go, I don't think, with my kilt outfits. I do wear some of my emerald green jewelry when I wear this. I also have this big, now this is just jade, so that doesn't matter, but it's green and it counts. I've been looking all morning for something that Moose gave me oh, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And it's a seed pearl necklace that ties at the bottom and it's open and you just tie it or wear it different ways. You could even loop it around a couple times. But on the end are two Trinity symbols in silver. And the Trinity is symbolic of the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And that's the symbol of that. It's a never ending sign. One of the other symbols of Irish jewelry is the heart in the hand. And you've seen that many, many times. A lot of times that's in gold too, and it has the heart in the middle and the hands holding it on both sides. And that symbolizes love and friendship. I have several necklaces which are symbolic. These are agates, and I believe those are from Ireland, from some of the stones and this was put together um, by a jeweler who just put all these stones <clears throat> together with wires. I thought that was really an unusual cross. This one I think is pretty, which is an, um, an, another look to it. This one is my mother's and she wore this for years. I think I might've brought this home to, from, uh, to her from Scotland but some of the stones have fallen out of her cross. I think this is the one. No, it's the other one. And I've, um, I've attempted to try and fill them in with some stones, but I will do. This is a, a cross. One year I bought these all for all the grandsons and the son-in-laws and, and uh, great-grandsons. And they all wear one of these around their neck. And this has the, uh, the leather strap. One of the years when we were living over there in Scotland, we did do a lot of traveling. One summer we visited, I think, 13 countries in a month with all the four children in the car, believe it or not. And I have something that I picked up from every country we visited, but I love the shamrock one from Ireland. That's made from the stones that 
are all over Ireland, the agates. One of the things that I wanted to show you, and this one is a newly bought one, but I do have an antique one that's probably 50, 60, 70 years old. And I think Margie might have that, but that's going to Bill. But this is called a sporin. And the sporin is worn over the kilt, around the waist, and hangs down in the front on men's kilt outfits. And it's a, it's a purse. And this one, I thought, comes with the long chain, which is really a belt. And I thought with this outfit, if we were having the party or if I was going out for the evening in this outfit, I would use this as a, it probably would just about carry my, my phone inside. But this is called a sporin and is part of the kilt uh, gear. Here's a reel of Shannon dancing at the Pentageous Theater in Hollywood with the famous river dance when she was nine years old. It was all on TV and a morning show. wanted to tell you that I did find my Irish shamrocks at Fawn's yesterday or the day before and I, I put them outside in the pouring rain for two days and they're doing beautifully. I am going to plant them now because I don't want to lose. I, I can have these growing for years. Now, Muzi and I are going to do just a little chat in front of the fireplace. So I'm going to get ready for that and You'll see Moosey all dressed in his eyes. Happy the garden to you, Moosey. <laughs> the rest of the day to yourself. Thank you. And in Ireland, we say... Slanja. Slanja. I'm not a drinker, but you know what? That warms my tummy immensely. That's a very old port that Mikey gave us to us for Christmas. Oh. And it's perfect. It is, isn't it? On a cold it? day like it is, and I love it. Last year we toasted each other with Bailey's Irish coffee. There you go. And probably the year before you had uh, Guinness, right? Yep. But I like this one. This is nice. Nice, yeah. So you look pretty dapper, and Moosey has his Irish Aaron sweater on from Ireland, and one of his caps, which I adore him in these caps. This one is a tweed. He had an Irish one over there that said Ireland, and we debated about that. You know what they say, if you're not wearing something green, we can pinch you. So let's chat a little bit. We'll share some of the wonderful times that we had with our trips to Ireland. You know, Moosey's and, and our ancestors are Irish, and so that's, that's why we celebrate. And not only that, but I think everybody enjoys celebrating on St. Patrick's Day, whether they're Irish or not. When I was in college, I marched in my senior year in the St. Patrick's Day parade in New York City, right down Fifth Avenue, was it? In cap and gown, white gloves and high, high heels. heels yeah. Can you believe it? Yeah. Uh, what was it, a five mile walk? When I was a junior in high school, Oh. We decided that we would go and see the big parade. So we got on a bus, my friend Joey Dressel, my friend Jer Jerry Breslin. We got on the bus into New York, got there, and said, ho, 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 the drinking age here is 18. We could probably pass for that. So uh, we were on 8th Avenue, and the parade was on 5th Avenue. And we stopped and had a beer 
in the first tavern we came to. And then we went to another one and they would sell you a shot of Irish whiskey, probably not Irish whiskey, but whiskey for a quarter. Oh. So, so well, how many quarters we have between us? We have to bus fare back home. Anyway, Dressel and I would sing and we would sing and then we'd ask the guys to buy us a drink, which they did. Well, we went to the next bar and the next bar. And then by that time, it was six o'clock and we had missed the parade, although we caught some of it on television. We missed the parade. Which song do you want to hear? <laughs> well, when Irish eyes are smiling, just one or two When parts. Irish eyes are smiling, sure it's day, a sweet and day. <clears throat> The voice is there, but the words are gone. <laughs> I forgot the words. But when Irish eyes are Irish. smiling, sure they'll steal your heart away. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well. Jersey girls, all my Jersey buddies, are you going into the parade? When is it going to be? Is it going to be tomorrow or on Saturday? I don't even, we always used to watch it the on TV. The movie that I watched for the, probably the seventh time, last night or the night before, was Harvey with James Stewart. Oh yeah. And he's with this, the eight, six foot, three inches rabbit. And at one point towards the end of the movie, great movie, he says, my mother used to say to me, Elwood, she always called me Elwood, you should be very, very wise or very, very kind. I tried uh, wise for many, many years, but now I'm working on kindness. And that's the end of the quote. I always remember that. I always and remember I you saying that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the movie? Harvey. Harvey. It's yeah. the rabbit. What are we going to do? Are we going to maybe cook it today and then have it tomorrow? Uh, I think we better cook it tomorrow. We can look forward to that. Okay. Moosey and I did a couple of great Irish breakfast and uh, Irish stew videos in the kitchen, both of us two years ago when COVID was just starting. So watch those videos if you want to see a couple more Irish videos on St. Patty's Day. Yeah. Cheers again, Moosey. Slancha. I better go uh, make my, my Irish bread. Slancha. <laughs> Would you believe? <laughs> Mine is gone. Oh, I'm here in the kitchen, but I'm not going to be doing any cooking. <laughs> All I'm going to be doing is showing you what I'm going to cook tomorrow. It just got too late in the day, and if I'm going to get this up in the morning, there's no way I can cook my potatoes and my cabbage and everything. We'll have to cook it tomorrow and have it. But I do want to show you some bread. First of all, here is my corned beef. I bought it the other day, and I bought the point cut, which is the more reasonable one. And what I will do is I will boil this probably for maybe three hours and it might be good to slice but I think more than anything it probably will um, come off in shreds or chunks which is fine by us because we'll eat it either way. Um, the other thing that I did get yesterday and I did show you all the cone heads <laughs> The cabbages were all cone heads for some reason or other. That last leaf just went around in a cone. But this will go in with the potatoes. And I did buy some nice Idaho potatoes. Of course, Idaho. And I will cook these with the cabbage and we will have a proper corned beef dinner tomorrow night. However, what I might be able to cook for you in the next few videos are some of the leftover St. Patrick's Day dinners and they're good ones and I'm going to tell you about those in a minute. A couple of our favorite, very favorite 
St. Patrick's Day meal, leftover meals are number one, cold cannon. Now cold cannon is the leftover cabbage chopped up and mixed in with leftover chopped up potatoes. And you mush it up real good. You put some good spices in there and that's it. And you just eat it. Now that's a poor man's meal. <laughs> My mother used to make those during the war and they were fabulous. The other one that we both love are the Irish potato cakes. And I suppose they're very similar to Latke's where you grate a raw potato and you mix it in with a little flour, maybe an egg and some onions, and then you make a patty and you fry it on the top of the stove. And then you turn it over and it's fabulous with sour cream. So, so good. So those are gonna be some of the leftover meals that we're going to be having. But since my granddaughter Bridget called me a little while ago and she said, Nanny, they just made some hot Irish soda bread at Vaughn's. Look at these two breads. Now they're a little late in coming out with them. They should have come out with them maybe last week when they should have come out with the shamrocks. But these are the traditional soda breads with the traditional cross cut before you put it in the oven in the top. Both sides have it where it spreads open. Now this, these have some raisins in them and this one has the crystallized sugar. It's just a sweeter taste. And this just has powdered sugar on here. So the way we like to have this bread, it's kind of like a scone. We put jam and whipped cream on there. Cuddled cream is what they use in Ireland, Scotland and England. But there's so many ways you can have this Irish bread. It's great with soup. It's also great in the morning, similar to scones. So I won't be baking these since Vons did it for me and we will be enjoying them <laughs> no end. Now I do like to make another kind of a bread and it's my grandma Nellie Flanagan's Irish bread that is a sweet bread. And I put caraways and uh, caraway seeds and raisins in that. And that is a sweeter bread. You heat it up and you have it with butter and it's also delicious in the morning. So that's my cooking. <laughs> Not too much, but I showed you somewhat of what we like in the way of Irish food. I will put the two videos where we did the full Irish breakfast a year or two ago. And the other one we did was the uh, Irish stew. Moosey and I sat right here in the kitchen couple of years ago, right when COVID began, and we made an Irish stew with all the goodies. So those videos I will put down in the description box. Just go to push the space underneath the video. Then we'll go to the description where you see more, push the word more, and you will see anything that I've listed in there and down below any videos. You'll see the thumbnails of the videos and then you can push on them and I'll take you right to them. So that's it for the cooking. Now Shani's on her way down. She will film me out by the rock wall. It's getting a little dark. Well, not really, but we're losing the sun. What little of it we had today. By the way, I want you to look up on the mantel and see all my new green candles. But not only that, right there, sitting in the middle of the cottage where Irish houses is Patrick. I was shocked when I saw that this morning when I woke up. You know, he only comes to our house at Christmas time and he 
he just jumps all over the place. But he must have been so excited about St. Patrick's Day that he's joining us. So let's all welcome Patrick to the celebration of St. Patrick's Day, and I'll let him stay there for as long as he wants. You know, I guess you could say that Patrick is our Irish elf on the shelf who comes not only at Christmas time, but because he's Irish, he has to be here. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our Irish video. I wish you all the happiest of days, whether you're Irish or not. Thank you all for all your comments. Moosey and I just appreciate them so much. I love you all. Goodbye for now. And God bless us all. Ha, 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 ha.